In the last video, we talked about vectors. And we said that a vector is any quantity that we need more than one number to describe. So vector quantities. Now in this video, I want to talk about an equation with vectors in it and how, how that looks. So um, and the, the equation we'll use is Newton's second law. It's a vector equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. F equals ma. And we haven't talked about this as a vector equation yet, but we'll, we'll do that in this video. So say I have a solar system. My sun here in the middle. And we'll just pretend there's one planet or only pay attention to one planet. A sun here, and then planet Earth, drawn a little bit bigger than it probably should be, and it has some land on it. So if we want to talk about the force on Earth due to the sun's gravity, we would say that there's a force toward the sun in this direction, right? The sun's pulling the Earth toward, toward itself. So say, say that this is happening and we have a coordinate system that looks like this. So we've defined these directions to be uh, x direction and the y direction. So we can break this force, right? This is maybe f here. If we want to talk about this force in this coordinate system, we need to break it up into two parts, right? We can we can break it up into an x coordinate or an x component and a y component. So this here we can we can say this this is the part along the x direction and this is the part along the y direction. And they end up being negative the way I've drawn these, but we won't worry too much about the actual values. So this is fx, force in the x direction, and the force in the y direction. And then maybe under here, under here, all right, the total force, a big T. That's the total force from the sun. So if we want to figure out the acceleration of Earth, we can write Newton's second law in two, two times. We can write force in the x direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Right? A force in the x direction will cause an acceleration in the x direction. And then a lot like that, we can write the force in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. So now we have, have these two equations. Right? We know that force is a vector because we need more than one number. There's a, you can think of it as a magnitude and a direction or as an x component and a y component. But we needed two equations to describe everything that's going on here. And in real life, there would be a third dimension, but we're only doing this. I only have a two dimensional drawing surface, so we're keeping to two dimensions for now. So now we have two equations that each relate one number to another number with the mass as a, as a scaling factor. So this is one number, this is one number, this is one number, and this is one number. So these by themselves are all scalars if we already specify the direction. If we want to combine this into one equation, we can we can write this as a vector equation. So we can write f in the x direction, that x component of the force, and the y component of the force. And we'll just bundle these together with these brackets here. Equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction and the acceleration in the y direction. Right, so all I've done here is I've just reorganized these two equations into one equation where, where these, these, these vectors each have two numbers in them. So really when you see a vector equation, all it is is just a couple of, of, of scalar equations bunched together. And then if we want to write our vector equation without specifying what the components are, I'm going to give myself more room here, we can write the force equals the mass equals the mass times the acceleration 
and then we'll put arrows on top of these to specify that these are actually vectors that that we need more than one number to describe these so it's not a simple number it's actually a vector and if we use this coordinate system here this x and y coordinate system these vectors if we if we write it out in detail picking a coordinate system will end up with these numbers whatever these are these two sets of numbers, these vectors in this coordinate system. So now we have an equation that says the force vector is equal to the mass times the acceleration vector. And this is true no matter which coordinate system we use, right? We, we, we made sense of it with this coordinate system here, with the x and y coordinate system, but we could have used some other coordinate system, right? We could have used something that, you know, that was tilted like this and we, we could label these with some letters maybe A and B right we could have used this coordinate system and we would have ended up with the same equation and certainly nature doesn't care which equation we use or which coordinate system we use this fact that the force vector is equal to the mass times the acceleration vector is is always true no matter what coordinate system we use so that means we're free to pick any coordinate system we want anything that's convenient and in this case it might actually make more sense to use polar coordinates with the sun at the center and and we'll we'll at some point do some videos about orbits and and talk a lot more about this but the point is that it doesn't matter which coordinate system we use this is always true and when Newton first figured this out, he probably had some coordinate system that he liked that was convenient for him. But he figured out something that went beyond the coordinate system that he was using. It's true in all coordinate systems. So I want to just reiterate this point that, that this is always true. These vectors always obey this equation. And, and if we want to pick a coordinate system, then we'll get the numbers out. right? So if we pick our xy coordinate system, this equation, if we apply this equation with this coordinate system, we'll get this equation with these two specific x and y components of the force and x and y components of the acceleration. So we could pick another, another coordinate system. So if we did polar coordinates, we'd have a radius. Oops, I'm going to do a force in the radial direction, right? We have a radius and we have an angle. So the force in the theta direction or in the direction of the angle or, or around the circle. So we could write Newton's equation this way or Newton's second law. Force equals mass times the acceleration in the radial direction and the acceleration in the angular direction. So we can use any coordinate system we want. And, and I don't know if I can really do justice to how, how amazing this really is that we can describe so many things in nature with this one pretty simple equation and just apply it to different situations. I think just doing problems and, and finding the coordinate system that really makes the analysis of something that's maybe somewhat complicated actually a lot simpler. Um, and, and just doing that in problems will really convince you of how cool this is, or, or not so much this, but, but this. That, that we can write vector equations. And it actually turns out that all fundamental physical equations don't actually depend on the coordinate system. So as complicated as nature can be, nature was actually pretty nice to us when it decided to follow these rules and, and, and not have some special coordinate system, which was the only one that worked.